Welcome to another tendon tearing episode of PLS TV, the program that just keeps on pushing to the limit and beyond. Coming up in the next half hour, we go back to basics BMX style with a little hardcore recreational flatland riding. Climbing gets the once over as we explore some serious new out of bounds territory. Wetsuits are optional. And rodeo action in the middle of a river. <laughs> If you've never attempted the sport of canoeing, you could be forgiven for thinking that the words canoe and rodeo should not belong together in the same sentence, let alone be used to describe a rapidly developing sport in both Europe and the USA, a sport responsible for attracting huge crowds wherever it's held. Once again, the origins of canoe rodeo require some explanation, as do many of the extreme sports derived from what is generally seen as a fairly mainstream activity. Both canoeing and to some degree kayaking have well established footholds with outdoor adventurers around the world. And what was once a simple but essential means of travel for many native peoples on various continents has become a pastime viewed by millions, thanks to endurance events and sporting contests. Ranging from a method of travel from one point to another to fishing trips, river exploring right through to white water and extreme canoeing on surfaces other than water, the humble canoe has come a long way from its carved wooden beginnings. Drawing its base from both whitewater and slalom canoeing, where holes or eddies behind rocks and other obstacles create a different flow pattern in the water, Canoe Rodeo could best be described as freestyle or expression session of canoeing. Moves such as 360s, barrel rolls, nose rides and many others feature in a rodeo sequence which must be executed in a limited time period, just like a rodeo. The size and style of these manoeuvres is determined largely by contestant skill and to some degree the speed and depth of water flow through the hole. Canoes used for rodeo are shorter, wider and more buoyant than slalom canoes, which also makes them more manoeuvrable. When executed by someone at a reasonable level, canoe rodeo looks a bit like this. and like this.
Time now to get back to basics with a bit of recreational flatland BMX. Out in the back blocks without the pressure of competition and the hordes of fans eyeballing every move. Just some trees, grass and a dirt track with some interesting bits for inspiration. They call it flatland BMX because there are no man-made ramps or half pipes and many flatland competitions are held on basketball courts or large flat areas of bitumen. Tracks like this are the starting point for many of today's professional riders and serves an excellent training ground as many of the tricks seen in today's competitions are perfected on the side of a dirt hill. The benefit to riding in areas away from the multitudes of spectators is the chance to perfect many of the big air moves and try out new tricks in front of a select few friends. This builds confidence and often gives rise to spectacular tricks which find their way in expression sessions. The chance to repeat certain moves over until perfected happens rarely in competition. So blasting away outdoors is the ideal way to discover what is and isn't possible with only your mates to laugh if it doesn't come off. Mogul skiing has been around almost since the sport of skiing itself evolved from strapping two shaped wooden boards to your boots and was probably one of the unavoidable byproducts of the early days in the snowfields, as natural obstacles closely resemble today's finely groomed bumps and have existed since snow first fell. With the progression of technology over the years redefining the effectiveness of bindings and the shape, speed and response of skis in the snow, it was only a matter of time before human ability to tackle bumps increased dramatically. When the finer disciplines of skiing have been mastered to an expert level, such as parallel and slalom skiing, the next logical step is to test these honed skills on terrain that demands precision in all areas and the ability to pick and execute a correct line down the mountain in a split second. Go Michael! Along with the sharpening of these skills, amazing leg fitness and a highly developed sense of balance are the other key ingredients required to reach some level of competence in the bumps. The majority of skiing on this terrain takes place from the waist down, Go, with the body supporting two Go, giant Annika! shock absorbers, in this case being the legs, which serve to soak up all the bumps and attend to steering.
Additional speed and further tricks like airs are added by hitting the bumps full on and launching off them, the results are pretty spectacular. When it all comes together, runs like this result. Sometimes, though not very often, unless pushed, the cameraman will go to extreme lengths to get the perfect action shot, even risking a lens more expensive than the housing and his body put together. This guy found a hot spot under the double jump, and that's why he deserves our Fearless TV Play of the Day. What more is there to say about bungee? Things just haven't been as interesting since they banned the double bungee. But just to keep the adrenaline high, here's some more point of view shots featuring speed, gravity and extreme facial expressions. Keep an eye out for the camera safety strap to the right arm.
Not only are they not satisfied with searching for ridiculously impossible footholds in the slime-covered soaking rock face, these legends need to be hammered with a thousand pounds of water per second. A bit like ice skating into a fire hose. The boogie board has been traditionally seen as the training ground for those not quite ready to stand on a surfboard and face the pounding waves, or for those who prefer to be much closer to the water and use their bodies more to harness the power generated by the wave's momentum. Whatever the reason for preferring a boogie board over surfing or even body surfing, it's clear the original designers never meant the equipment to be used on sand. But as in the case of snowboards in sand dunes and the riding of car bonnets on desert salt pans, various pieces of equipment find their way into bizarre locations, purely through experimentation by extreme athletes, which is a good thing. Not a good thing, however, is the wax surface of the board, much like a snowboard travelling on sand. But there is obviously some fun to be had, and who wants to get in the way of fun? Back to a more natural habitat for the boogie board. in the water, not in its intended use, but when there are no waves to be had, improvisation is the purest form of expression. If nothing else, this demonstrates the boogie board's stability at speed, even when towed behind a boat. Climbing, whether it happens on rock ledges or cliff faces, anywhere outdoors where the unpredictability of nature is involved, is hazardous at the best of times. But these hardy adventurers are about to take it to the extreme. The first stage in this mission is to abseil over new territory, a leg burning exercise through thick bush and rocky outcrops to reach this secluded site. Even at this point a fall could spell disaster, as rescue from this area can only be accomplished by helicopter. Once our climbers have accessed the river, it's then a matter of reaching the source of its power, which in this case happens to be a waterfall. If you've ever experienced the adrenaline rush of abseiling, multiply that by about three, and imagine launching backwards into the void with the added pressure of thousands of litres of water hammering in your face, attempting to speed your journey down the falls. Apart from obscuring most of the footholds, the water also increases the difficulty in dealing with ropes and other safety equipment. At least you are guaranteed of remaining cool, no matter what happens. Our crew succeeded despite the odds, and managed to enjoy the sheer terror at the same time.